All right. Well, what's going on, everybody? Let me... um, post this in our community here. All right. Give it about 30 seconds and then we'll get started. Uh, today's analysis is, you know, going to be a quick one because I think everyone and their mother has gone completely bullish. So it's, um, it's, it's really interesting to see people get bullish for no reason other than time has elapsed and the market has not gone down. Um, <clears throat> what's going on, Matthew? How are you, man? What's going on, everybody? Let me know who all has joined. Also, please hit the thumbs up if you do enjoy our content. I'd really appreciate it. It helps other people see the value of our community. What's up, Ezekiel? How's everyone doing today? It's a new week. It's Monday, and it's a new month. So, yeah, it's very exciting. What's up, Tomio? Daniel? How's them? How are you? How's everyone doing today on this fantastic Monday? Yeah, so a lot's been going on, man. And, and not only just you know, the markets themselves, but of course, as you guys very well know, you know, the, the riots that are happening in America and so much happening in the uh, political system itself of instability and mishandling of things this is just what happens when you see decades and decades of oppression you know this is what happens right um what's going on ta made easy what's up daniel marco um mike face carl Sargent. how's everyone doing my short uh tomio says is at 94.50 yeah nice i like it i like it all right so let's get started right <clears throat> on the 15 minute chart this movement right here happened on Saturday, okay? I've told you guys many times before, Saturday and typically all the way until Sunday, about 5 p.m. when the futures open, it, it should be completely discounted as shenanigans and movements that don't really matter because either they don't have too much volume behind it or it's you know some professionals here and there trying to drive the market up or down. Um, because the volume is pretty low, the books are thin. Uh, it's it's fairly easy to drive a market, you know, into short squeezes or long squeezes or whatever. Okay, so for the most part, this move right here, where everyone was getting bullish and people on Twitter were um, commenting and laughing at me and saying, "How's your short doing?" and whatnot. Uh, you know, you got to ignore these people because they're, to be honest, they're pretty dumb. Um, and more than likely, they're not profitable. All they care about is Bitcoin, uh, you know, as, as an asset that should continuously go up. Okay. So when we saw this kind of move happening up here, what I saw this as, especially when it was starting to reject down as another shorting opportunity on the way back down. And so that's exactly what we did. Um, I think right around this breakdown right here, this is where we reshorted. Um, and add it to our short up here, okay? So I'm averaged in, I think about 93, 193.25 in my short. Uh, so right now at, a, at a, about a $250 loss or so. But again, I've told you guys many times before that when you're looking at this big period of consolidation right here, there's, in my opinion, nothing to be bullish about here. It doesn't necessarily mean we have, have to be bearish here. Right. But I think there are more signs, <clears throat> excuse me, there are more signs available here to justify our bearish bias than there are bullish signs. Some of the bullish signs, you can make the argument that, okay, it looks like we're consolidating. But I've told you guys before that let's do something like this. Okay. So let's go to the daily chart. All right. And if we go to the daily chart, okay. We can see right here in 2019, we see this big descending triangle top. 
that was created. Everyone and their mother was bullish up here. And I, I'll be honest, I was bullish up until this point right here. Because here's the thing that happened over here that most people didn't start seeing, which was this descending triangle creation. All right. So if we just do this um, function right here and we go from here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to play this and you'll see how that looks. Okay. So right about right there. Okay. So we're going to pause that right there at that particular point. Okay. This looked like this, a big bull flag, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this looked like a big bull flag. Everybody was talking about, oh, well, this is a bull flag that's printing. But when we started to roll over from here, all right, and we started to head down, this is where I started to become bearish because I said that, okay, well, it already looks like there is somewhat of a half presence of a descending triangle, right? And then when we started seeing that, okay, that is then more and more clear that a descending triangle is being created, as you can see. And then lo and behold, boom, we saw that breakdown from that descending triangle. Okay, so we're seeing somewhat of a similar pattern, in my opinion, here. If you remember, guys, if you were around, you know, middle of last year, 2019, do you guys remember when everyone and their mother right around this area started to become bullish? Right? You guys remember that, I'm sure. This is the same thing that's happening here. Do you know why people get bullish? It's because they're not seeing the kind of result in terms of bearishness because they want an immediate drop. They want price to start dropping right away. They cannot uh, fathom the idea of holding on to shorts or you know, thinking that consolidation is going to take place for maybe a day, maybe you know, five days or six days, and then we're gonna start rolling over. Or, or they cannot, they cannot um, accept the idea that because we're consolidating here, right, we could consolidate more and more and then start to roll over. Or they can accept the idea that maybe we could start pushing up from here, but we have not actually done that, right? So impatience is what destroys people more often than not in markets. It's really not the fact that you're not smart enough to do technicals or you're not smart enough to understand how a market is showing you weakness to strength or anything. It's merely the fact that most people are not capable of holding on to positions or a bias until being proven wrong otherwise. This is what separates the good traders from the shitty traders. That's the only difference. You got to be able to understand patience, right? You got to be able to manage your risk and you have to let the market play itself out. You either let the market show you that you're being proven wrong or you let the market do its thing and see if your analysis that you've done for days or weeks or whatever, your thesis that you've built, is it going to hold true or is it going to be invalidated? And so, so far, has my thesis been invalidated when it comes to this thing potentially breaking down? Not really. It also hasn't been validated either. So I'm okay with saying that Okay, well, you know, over here, it's possible that this could break out to the upside, but it hasn't, right? But my larger thesis of why I told you guys many times before of Bitcoin production costs have clearly shown that the cost for miners is significantly higher for, for the average person. And we're still down here. So a lot of miners are at a loss. Even on my Twitter feed, I even put out this thing right here, okay? Or was it? So right here, you can see the, what the hell? Um, where'd it go? It was just here a second ago. There it is. So the average first spend, right? First spend as well as net inventory for miners. You can see the miners are actually selling right now. There are more and more miners who've been continuously selling for the last several weeks, whether it was pre-having, into the having and now post having. It's, it's a clear sign that miners are at a loss, right? They're losing money by continuously mining at a loss due to their production costs being way the heck up here. And now that their reward is reduced by half, because remember, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin supply 
uh, rewards have been cut in half from 12.5 to 6.25 due to the Bitcoin halving, right? So this is one of the reasons why, again, this can't randomly change, right? I mean, this is a indicator that speaks on behalf of how the mining community overall is doing in terms of its uh, profitability, right? So if the miners are the ones who are really selling, maybe we should pay attention to, hey, wait a second, if the miners are actually selling and there's not a whole lot of reasons to just be spontaneously bullish, then who exactly is buying? Who is buying way the heck up here? Well, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't see anyone you know, aggressively buying up here. Equities themselves are a bit topped off, right? In the face of adversity of what's happening with coronavirus, what's happening with the riots across America, okay? Um, overall, you know, equities have been overextended to the upside, right? I don't see any reason why Bitcoin is supposed to have a narrative that we should be bullish. Now, way the heck down here, okay, I admit that on the way up, I was still bearish and I was wrong, right? But we still took a couple of long trades in here. We also took a couple of scalp short trades, but it's best to be short up here because your risk to reward is so good. I mean, think about it like this, okay? If you are long right now, right? So from here, your stop based on a daily time frame should be at least here or over here. And what you're really doing is you're going to want to sell off into resistance, meaning your risk to reward is 0 0.64. Basically, what that's saying is you're risking $1 to get $0.64 as a reward for your trade, right? Because remember, this is the $10,500 resistance that we have not been able to break through since way the heck over here, October 2019. Well, technically, since way back here around September 2019, because from here, we rolled over, pushed up into that, rejected February 2020, rejected. Now we're again coming up to that $10,000 level and we're putting in lower highs and lower highs, right? Yes, we're also putting in higher lows right there, okay? But I've told you guys before that when it comes to volume analysis, right? You don't print, first of all, okay? Price going up and volume overall going down. And then you have significant volume surges right at the top like that. That tells me that the sellers are actually heavily selling. It's pretty obvious to me that when you see big bars coming up here and you see big volume bars coming up at the top, that indicates that there's more selling happening than there is buying. And if there is buying happening up here, someone is buying into what professionals are selling. And so remember that professionals, when they distribute, okay, it's a process. It's a sometimes a multi-week process, a multi-month, or sometimes a multi-year process, depending on how big the asset is, right? I told you guys um, that if we went over here, okay, we were in this large consolidation pattern, descending triangle top right here in 2019, descending triangle top right here in 2018. Both these times, if you go back on my YouTube video and look, both these times, these markets both broke down and we call this in the Advantage community both times. You can ask any of our Advantage members. So I'm seeing the same sort of development up here. Now, obviously this has yet to be formed, but once it starts rolling over, I bet you we're going to get more and more people on the bandwagon of, all right, well, we're, you know, we're going to be, uh, once price comes down here, people are more bearish. Once price comes back up here again, they're going to be more bullish. It's going to roll back over, more bearish, more bullish. People just want to, you know, react or overreact to, wait, to the way price moves, um, you know, accordance to their bias, right? If they're not in a winning position, they want to be betting you know, against the market. They don't have enough patience to wait for the market to play itself out, okay? So this is the sort of development that I'm seeing. And I've also put this on my Twitter. So if you guys ever want to um, call me out for being wrong or being dumb, hey, I'm all for it, right? It's, it's all fun and games to me. I, I really don't care uh, what people think of me when I get my position wrong. Because at the end of the day, listen, whether the market goes up or down, I'm going to figure out a way how to make money. I really don't care which way the market goes. All right. I trade this market on a day to day basis, whether it goes up or down, whether it goes sideways. 
I'll either trade Bitcoin or I'll go to the equity markets or I'll go to FX. I'll do something. I'll figure out a way to make money in the market. The question is, are you going to do that? Or are you going to just complain, whine, um, and you know, talk about on Twitter how you were right about your position and I was wrong or vice versa, right? So stop all the, the small talk and you know, the shilling of bullish or bearish narratives and trade the chart. Trade the chart of what it's showing you on a day-to-day -day basis, and then you will, okay, ultimately be able to make money. But if you keep getting caught up in these narratives of why Bitcoin should be bullish or why it should push higher because it is this sovereign asset and uh, Bitcoin is going to do great in times of recession or whatever, you're, you're going to get caught up in the noise. Bitcoin is not an asset that is ready for, you know, big boy um, plays like that. It is not an asset that is renowned for its ability to be seen as a storage of value. It's just not, it's not there yet. It probably needs another five or 10 years, but hey, guess what? In the next five or 10 years, guess what you get to do, right? You get to maybe be patient and wait for this kind of narrative to play out, which I've talked about before, where you wipe out all the people from 2017 to 2020, and maybe you get a chance to buy Bitcoin at $2,400, or maybe way the heck down here around 1300. Well, everyone over here is going to keep trying to buy on the way down, on the way down. More than likely, once prices get below 3000, they're going to sell. They're going to sell at a major loss. Okay. So this is the, this is the problem with most people is that they don't want to be patient enough to watch the big plays, you know, play themselves out. All right. Uh, and by the way, folks, uh, if you're not familiar with our community, do hit the thumbs up. If you like our content, hit the thumbs up. Uh, today itself, um, I, I've been telling people that we're offering a 50% off discount for one month subscriptions. If you're not familiar with our community, uh, these are all the lock channels that you get. All right. Where we have leverage trading channels, the chat for crypto, equity channels where Fassel, our resident equities analyst, Every single day, he puts out content on how he's looking at the market, how he's trading in the, uh, trading the market, his stock of the day. You know, this is the kind of information that we put out to our Advantage members. And here's another perk of Advantage membership. All right, starting uh, every Sunday in June, we're going to have a former Citigroup portfolio manager who's going to talk to us. Uh, every single t Sunday uh, to Advantage members, and you can ask him questions about the stock market, about the economy, about how he's positioned in the market. And he discloses, by the way, every single week, how he's positioned in the markets to our Advantage members. So if it's not crypto, we offer the equity side. If it's not equities, we offer the FX side. We actually just closed an FX trade right here of 0.21% profit. Uh, this was a Euro dollar short that I took last week. So that was a pretty good trade we got in and out of in profit. Now I'm still looking for a euro dollar short. Um, we'll see where that we'll see where that goes. You know, by the end of today, but I'm still looking to short this. Going back to crypto. All right. So here's another thing. Okay, this is what most people get caught up in again and again. All right. If you can look at the high of this wick right here, which was around 96.29. The one thing you'll notice is on Saturday when we made this big push up to the upside, you can see we again came back down under, got rejected, got rejected again right there, and we started pushing down, right? So this is the line in the sand in terms of, in my opinion, where the bears are clearly defending right here. It's between $96.35 and all the way up to $9,700, okay? So unless we make a clean smash above this, Right, I would not even think about these levels up here around $9,800, which come from this trend line. Uh, or I'm sorry, this trend line being created from this high to this lower high, and then maybe somewhere up here around $9,829. Okay, so this is kind of where we are right now. Right, there's there's really no sort of bullish argument to be made. Not a whole lot of bearish arguments to be made, other than you know what I've told you about production costs you know, seeing the volumes at the top, and then also price being overextended. In terms of basic technicals, as we are right now, nothing is indicating right here that we're going to break down, at least not yet. 
we might chop around here, maybe another day, maybe by the end of the week, and then we start rolling over. But this is where people get bored. And when people get bored, they make mistakes. All right. And when they make mistakes, they lose money. And, you know, then they have to put on even higher leverage and see exactly, all right, well, I have to make back this money and I have to, you know, put in more money into my next position. These are just, you know, your, your typical amateur mistakes that will pretty much cost you everything. Okay. You'll, you'll lose your entire account. Um, you'll lose your sanity. Right. Uh, and I don't want that for you guys. Okay. So just, you know, understand the analysis that I'm sharing with you. Take it with a grain of salt. If you're still bullish, think of this as, you know, me giving you the other side of the perspective of why you could be wrong, right? Instead of me being right, think of it as, okay, how could I be wrong? All right. So always have a balanced and fair analysis in your own mind in understanding that there's a very high possibility that you could be wrong. I always consider that. On a daily basis, right? Again, um, <clears throat> we're, we're kind of consolidating right here. Not a whole lot ha uh, has happened right here, but overall volume is actually going down. And if you look back here, right? I, I showed you guys this chart, okay? Where was it? In the daily, let's throw on, I don't know if the volume will be brought up here perfectly, but let me see here. Okay, so if you look over here, right? Overall, once you got to this high in 2019, right? Volume overall until this point, right? Got lower and lower, just like in this contraction in this descending triangle. What do you think is happening right now? Look at this triangle, same thing, right? So we're starting to, if we start rolling over, I'd still figure volume is going to be fairly low, maybe fairly consistent around this key height right here. But I don't think it's going to increase right away unless we either get a breakout from here or an accelerated breakdown through this key level, through the key level. So if you're looking right for more upside, what you need to hope for is we get a breakout above this trend line right here. And not just a wick, you need a strong four hour, 12 hour, close above this level. And as we stand right now, if we went up straight up today, that would be 9826.5 that you want to see candles closing above that area on a 4 hour 12 hour basis. Okay? 12 hour because it's, you know, a half a day, a whole, you know, half day candle that you see close above a key area, a key resistance line. Okay? Uh, now, if you want to see a breakdown to the downside, I've talked about monthly opens before. Monthly opens are, are key um, markers that you want to pay attention to because they denote from the algo st standpoint where the algos want to defend a specific level. So if you look over here, this is where the monthly open started, right? Right around this area. You can see, tap the monthly open right there, took off. Tap the monthly open multiple, time, multiple times right there, took off, right? Again, came back to the monthly open pretty much by the end of the month, pushed off. So we are very, very close to the June monthly open. If we start breaking the monthly open, I've told uh, my Advantage members this trick before, that if you start breaking the monthly open, right, and you do that kind of movement right there, you start breaking down, that could be your potential short right there. And all you have to do is take a scalp short from this monthly open down to this level right here, which is this trend line. It's pretty, it's pretty simple, right? When you look at technicals, you can trade from level to level. There's nothing wrong with that. Just like if you see a breakout above this, trade the breakout to the next resistance. Don't think and assume that, all right, from here, we're going to just go straight up, okay? Because that's, I mean, you're then just assuming that we have to go straight up, all right? Or we have to break out. But if you trade from level to level, you have nothing to worry about. You secure profit. You don't have to worry about if it's going to break up, if it's going to break down. You just trade the technicals. Okay, uh, folks, if you like this analysis, please do give me a thumbs up. Uh, I, I really like doing these videos, uh, but I want more and more people to join, more and more people to see. Uh, and that will uh, ultimately you know, give us more success to the community where we offer more free content. And like I said earlier, 
right? If you guys are new and watching this, we have a 50% discount right now happening in our community. So do come join, inquire, message me right here if you are interested, and we'll get you started on that. We have equities analysis every single day, uh, Bitcoin and crypto analysis every single day, and then uh, Forex analysis. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Is there a head and shoulders developing on the four hour atomic earner asked? Yeah. So, um, this does look like a head and shoulders pattern. Uh, and I talked about this in my morning video to my advantage members, right? It, it's very possible that it starts, you know, pushing down for that right shoulder. Um, here's the thing about head and shoulders patterns. Okay. What you want to see, all right, is if you see a left shoulder and a head and a right shoulder, kind of like that. You want to see higher volume on the buy side going into that left shoulder. And you want to see a higher high made on the head, but with lesser volume. Okay. So in this particular case, right, it, it's kind of clear, kind of not, because you can see this is the left shoulder high right there. But the volume for the high of the left shoulder is technically this bar right here. Yes, you could consider, you know, this one as well, because it's leading into the left shoulder. But I don't know, if you're going by the book definition, uh, you typically want to see the highest volume at the top, right there for that left shoulder right there. And then you want to see a higher high made in the head with lesser volume. So yes, it technically looks like a, a head and shoulders pattern, which is again, a top bearish pattern. But I don't know, the volume doesn't match. And so it's not really like the perfect, you know, definition of a head and shoulders pattern. Um, now, here's the thing about head and shoulders patterns, okay? If there is a left shoulder and there is a head and then that right shoulder kind of goes like this and then it starts rolling back up. And if it starts breaking above, let's just say, I don't know, at least uh, towards um, halfway inside the head right there. So like this area, then this could be a potential continuation pattern where it's like higher lows and then we're going to push on up. Okay. I don't see that as a case. We still need to see the development of this because right now, technically you can make the argument that this is the head. This was a failed right shoulder and now we're moving back up, but the movement back up, you want to see at least past this area right here, which is around 9650 or so. And we start seeing the, the movement past 9650, then you could say, all right, well, we're going to push up all the way to about 98.25 or so, all right? I don't know if that's the case right now, but it doesn't really look like, you know, the head and shoulders wants to break down, at least not yet, okay? Uh, we did have a weekly and a monthly close, right? So here's, you know, a simple way that you can look at the point of breakdown from the previous cycle as a area of supply, right? So you can even look at it like this, actually. We can look at this as this area right here. Okay. So remember, this was the last candle of a consolidation period in a weekly time frame before we sold off, right? This was a top candle. You can even look at these two together where this is supply before we sold off. And so guess what happened each time we've come into that supply? Well, we're pressing high, lower high, pretty much a lower high, another lower high. This week, this previous week, we didn't even get up towards that uh, deeper part of the supply. We kind of just pushed down and closed lower. Now, if this weekly candle starts to smash up into this area, then we can say, all right, well, four hours confirming it, um, daily's possibly confirming it, and then weekly showing you that, all right, well, maybe we're ready to push higher. But again, we just started the weekly, you know, only about, uh, 15 or 16 hours ago, right? So we got a long way to go into this weekly candle that's present right now. So don't get too hasty on thinking that, all right, from here, we're definitely going to push down, definitely going to push up. The only reason why I've been so visible um, and open with my short positioning in this market is because I wanted to show you guys uh, in my live sessions to my Advantage community members that you don't always have to look at Bitcoin as an asset that you have to scalp day in and day out. Yes, there are opportunities when you can get to trade the market like that, but sometimes the market gives you clear signs of tops and bottoms. And the reason why most retailers FOMO 
at the top, right, or buy resistance or sell at the bottom is a simple phenomenon, which is fear, right? It's, it's emotions, fear, panic, all that. All that coupled together is why most retailers are not able to be successful at this market because they're not looking at the markets from the unemotional standpoint that most traders or investors are, which is looking at the technicals, looking at the fundamentals, and that's it. Not how you feel particularly in the market of, oh my God, I'm in a losing position, or oh my God, everybody's talking about, you know, we're going to break out to 10K or whatever. Forget that noise. Focus on the chart. Focus on the technicals. Focus on the volume. Okay? When you start to understand that, then you will get an understanding of how you can trade the market successfully. Okay? Instead of paying attention to the noise and the BS that's out there. Okay? Um, so let's take a look at the monthly real quick, right? So I had one of my members also ask, hey, you know, this is a monthly close that we've seen. That's the highest monthly close that we haven't had since one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I think eight months. Or actually, yeah, no, nine months almost. So in the last nine months, this monthly candle that just closed for May is the highest monthly candle closing that we've had. Because if you look back, all of these have closed lower. Remember, red candles open at the top, they close lower. This one opened up here, closed right there. This one opened right here, closed right there. This one opened up here, closed right there. Open up here, closed down here. So all of these candles, right, show us that May 2020 has closed higher than the last eight or nine months. So everyone is thinking that, all right, well, you know, I guess from here, I mean, this is a high close. Like we should start pushing up from here. And I know people are talking about the uh, S2F model um, from plan B and they're talking about that red dot thing, right? Uh, I don't know who it was that was posting that. I saw that somewhere. I don't know where it was. I don't know if it's on my uh, Twitter feed, but the S2F model again is, is unproven, right? If you guys are not familiar with that, you know, go check that out right? Plan B's S2F model. It's unproven, okay? Uh, it also has a limited history of looking at, you know, Bitcoin cycles. I mean, technically, Bitcoin has only had one big bullish cycle. It's never had, you know, multi-year periods of consolidations where uh, we could see the price moving up and down due to geopolitical events. It's also been lucky to be riding off the back of a 10-year bull market of the S&P 500. Look, if we go back from 2008, 2009, from way the heck back here, we've been in an uptrend since then for the S&P 500. So Bitcoin has been lucky to ride in a risk-on environment, meaning investors and traders are okay with taking risk on an asset that is largely unproven because they think that, okay, well, the markets are overall going up. So we take our chance on something like Bitcoin, but we are in a fairly unstable environment, whether it's geopolitically, whether it's economically, um, you know, many reasons around the world, whether it's coronavirus, whether there's the stark uh, inequality between Main Street and Wall Street. There's so many reasons that you could list where the markets themselves seem a bit more exhausted to the upside and we don't know how much further they're going to go. And in my opinion, this is why I think that this top pattern that I had for Bitcoin, right, which is this 2020 potential descending uh, triangle, this could be the perfect top pattern. And this could be the perfect area where the market is going to give us multiple attempts, multiple attempts where we can short it. Okay. Um, and I don't think the market typically gives people a lot of opportunities to do so unless the market needs your help, in a sense, to crowd the trade and together we push the market down or together we push the market up, okay? Very rare events like that, you know, happen where you're given an opportunity to buy the bottom or sell the top like that, okay? But sometimes when they are there, Pay attention because those are the once in a lifetime opportunities where you get to make a shit ton of money. 
All right. Again, not investment advice. You guys can do whatever you want. If you want, you can go long right here thinking we're going to go to 10,000 or 11,000. Uh, and like I said, I could very well be wrong. Uh, but if I'm wrong right here, you know, I don't buy it. This is not the area where you could tell me I'm wrong. Maybe up here around 10,000 plus. And if we start rolling over, even over here, 8,500, I'm still not right. I'm partially right. I'm more right than I was up here. But there's still a long way to go to break this descending triangle down. Okay. Um, Johannes asks, uh, any thoughts on gold and silver prices? Oh, yeah. So we actually traded gold, um, GLD specifically, the ETF, not too, not too far back. Um, I think I closed out my GLD position. Or actually, no, I have some of my GLD position, I think, uh, sitting still. So we made a good, I think, four and a half, six percent profit, I think, um, in the GLD positions. And I still think that gold is probably going to push up higher. Uh, and given this kind of environment that we're in, right, this whole equities are um, overextended. We also see that you know, the government itself is printing so much money and people want to get into maybe a hedged asset like gold, where they think that if there's a recession that's going to come, they want to be an asset that could appreciate in recessions. And that's typically gold, right? It's typically gold that does do decently well, moderately well in recessions. And if you're looking for a target on gold, I've got this target right here, One, uh, 1775. And then up here around about 1825 to 1900. Okay. So those are typically the, the thoughts that I have on gold. Um, silver, right? Uh, let me see if you, we can pull up the silver ETF. Uh, SLV. Let's just go to SLV. That's fine. So I like the silver uh, ETF chart right here because we see, you know, this kind of nice big bullish candles to the upside right here for silver. I think silver has been in a downtrend for far too long. Once it starts breaking out, if you look at this from a monthly perspective, like let's just say you did something like this, like a trend line, or even if you move that trend line just a little bit over like that, if you start seeing a breakout above 1775 or something, I mean, we could probably get all the way, heck, maybe even way over here you know, around $25. So from here, all right, if you do get a breakout from here to the upside, that's about a 44% move. Again, not investment advice. I don't really trade silver. I do trade gold and GDX, which is the gold miners ETF. And I do like those. Um, but for the most part, I do think silver is going to be, you know, in my opinion, looking bullish, especially like gold over the next maybe several, several months. Okay. Any thoughts on T-Fuel? All right, let's check out T-Fuel. I don't really, I got to be honest, I have not traded alts in a, in a, in a while because I still think that the alt markets are very extended or there's just so much happening in the alt, alt markets in terms of scams and, you know, them being Ponzi's. I just don't really trust that many alts anymore. And so if you're looking at this particular alt market, right? So you can make the argument that, okay, well, this was a low right here, right? We pretty much double bottomed right there, okay? You want to see, if you want to take a chance on this uh, long position right here, right? All you have to do is you got to make sure that this low right here, this line does not break. The line is about 81.50. So if that line does not break, your stop could be under that line, okay? Because it was a nice double bottom, all right? So your stop could be... Um, about that line, and then you could take your, you could take your uh, long position into this area right here, about uh, eleven thousand two hundred and six. Okay, so from nine thousand where we are right now, to where it could go, from here on up, that's about a twenty four percent move if T fuel does make it up. All right, and your stop will be just around that X. Okay. It's possible that it moves higher, but th this would definitely be the first area that I would look to take profit. I'll be honest. Uh, maybe if it gets all the way up here, I'd take profit around 15,000 sets, uh, but I would probably be a little bit more safer at that point. If you want, you know, you can trade it from level to level. You could say, all right, well, you know, if it breaks up above this area 
right? So say if it goes from here to here, and then if it breaks up from here to here, then you can take another trade. That's the only way I could trade T fuel. Uh, and again, like I said, I have not traded alts, um, at least not as frequently as I used to. Uh, in my long-term section, I actually close out a majority of my alt positions. And this is again, February 12th, you can see this right here, time stamped and everything. I let my advantage members know uh, everything exactly how I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. How I'm looking at the market, how I'm trading the market, if, I, if I'm short, if I'm long, whatever you know, uh, position or direction that I'm looking at. Okay, So on February 12th, 2020, when Bitcoin prices were, where was it? Uh, way the heck up here, right? This was February 12th right there. Right around this area, I started to trim down and close out all my long-term positions and all my alt positions. I closed out Nexo, um, Link, I closed out Tezos, Ethereum, I had some Litecoin, I closed out even Bitcoin. I closed down a lot of money uh, in size right around that February top. Why? Because I was getting the these crazy bullish vibes from people and everyone kept saying, all right, guys, you know, it's bull season and alts are going to take off and Ethereum is going to be $500. Bitcoin is going to go to 13,000. This is the same garbage that I'm hearing now. Nothing has changed. If you pay attention and keep your ear to the ground, you will hear the same people talking about being bullish up here, just like they're being bullish right here. It's the same thing. It's a, it's a repetitive process. But sometimes you just need common sense. Common sense to see that why are people getting bullish at resistance? Right? What exactly has changed? Nothing, really. I mean, from a logical standpoint, nothing. But if you pay attention to these calls of why these people randomly get bullish, you will realize that these are the people you want to trade against. Okay? And this is why I, I do my analysis the way I do. I don't listen to anyone else, okay? There are people that I listen to, like I said before, when it comes to the stock market, but I, I've got about 11 years on a lot of people, okay? I've got 11 years in experience of trading multiple markets, knowing technical analysis, reading a ton of books, taking a lot of courses, having mentors uh, who have you know, 20, 30 years experience. Then I listen to those people. I'm not gonna listen to some average dude on Twitter telling me why I should long Bitcoin. It's fucking stupid. Right? Why would I do that? You know. So listen to people who are going to challenge you in your views, even if it's not me. If it's someone else who challenges your views and gives you the unbiased perspective of looking at the markets from a macro sta standpoint as well as you know a more technical standpoint, this is what you need to do to get better in this market to make money consistently. And folks, everyone is now suffering through either job losses, through income loss, um, either you know, you're know you dealing with the riots or you're dealing with coronavirus, either you're dealing with political instability or you're dealing with you know some problem or another. This is why I think that trading and investing is the one way that people could get out of their rut because it gives you a passive income flow, like nothing you can ever do in any part of life, right? Because think about it. I mean, you can try, okay, I've been uh, a full-time trader for about two and a half, three years now. Okay, before that, I still traded, day traded. I used to wake up about 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, 5 a.m. in the markets just for the, uh, you know, Japanese sessions or the Euro sessions, right? This is when I traded FX in about 2015 or so, or 2014, okay? Or, you know, you could start looking at, you know, other markets, whether it's equities. You could start looking at crypto. These markets are open, you know, at least crypto is open 24 seven. So you need to start empowering yourself with this knowledge of how to trade technicals, how to read technicals. What exactly is, you know, Amal showing me that I am not understanding or that I'm missing, you know? So let people challenge your views, whether they're bullish views or bearish views, okay? Uh, let me see, uh, is tomorrow BTC going to break out? MD June ideas. I have no idea. If I had that kind of crystal ball, I wouldn't be talking to you or anyone. <laughs> if I knew, uh, you know, Bitcoin is going to break out tomorrow or the day after, I mean, why would I need to do anything? <laughs> you know, 
no one really knows what the market is going to do. You can even look up Warren Buffett quotes and you'll see that he even says, I have no idea what the market is going to do tomorrow. If you believe in an asset and you believe in your technicals and your fundamental philosophy and your research, then you will trade the asset with proper risk management and that's all you can do. There's no one, you know, no one person, no indicator, uh, nothing that will tell you the market is going to go up or down. That's the reality of it. Okay. Um, can I look at XRP or NEO? Uh, sure. I'll take a look at XRP. Uh, let me see here. So XRP US dollar, XRP BTC pair. Um, let me see here. So, uh, okay. So this is the case for a lot of alts, all right? And I'm seeing this kind of structure being created right here. Okay, so here's XRP, right? XRP already hit the key high into this previous consolidation block, all right? So it's already pulled back and retraced. If it's going to move up, like let's just say it puts in another higher low kind of like this, I would probably be willing to take this long from here up to this area, but that's it. That's all I'm taking the long towards. I'm not gonna hope for a breakout to the upside or anything. Remember, trade from level to level until the market shows you that it's ready for a breakout or a breakdown, okay? So from here, you know, let's just say you even bought in right now, from here to here, that's an 11% move to the upside, which is this previous resistance. On the flip side, your stop could be just below this wick right here. This seems to be, you know, probably a one-off wick, but just below this area right here, that's a 7% loss. So you're basically saying that you'd rather lose $7 for a potential $11 gain. That's, I mean, I think that's fine. You know, um, Cedric says, sir, I think people became bullish in the market due to the halving news. And for me, I don't really believe it. Yeah, th that's another thing. I mean, the halving already happened, right? So, so there's not a whole lot of uh, fundamentals for Bitcoin that are telling you why you should be bullish. I mean, if the halving was pretty much, this is what we accomplished due to the halving of getting us to 10,000, then that's a pretty pathetic halving, right? I mean, unless, you know, like I said, if we're going to consolidate here and then we're going to go on a big bull round to 20,000, then I'd say, okay, shit. All right. Well, looks like now the post having effect is taking place, but it doesn't seem to be the, the case right now. Like I said, on a daily time frame, we still have resistance to get through at 10,000 or 10,500. So we got a long way to go. All right, folks, let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, M Stone asks, should I pay a should I pay the 12% VIG to get BTC at the moment so I can 5X short it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I can't really advise on that. But personally, I still think that if you have the same thesis that I do about Bitcoin, you know, potentially breaking down from here, you'll have plenty of time to short. You don't just have to short here um, and think that, all right, well, I have to short here because Bitcoin is, you know, already at 9,500. Right. Maybe you can wait for the confirmation, kind of like, you know, when prices come to this area and they start looking like they were close to a breakdown. So this way you can have a confirmation that, all right, prices look really weak and they're definitely ready for a breakdown, just like they did over here in September. OK. So, again, folks, uh, hit the thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts on Bitcoin. Uh, by the way, last um, last thing that I'm going to mention is Algo. All right. So I've been paying attention to algo because uh, some of the traders asked me about it. so here's algo right here okay so this was actually the key high um that we put in uh 26th april and so you can see right here we've spent about three days over here in algo above this key high so not really a bad sign all right so in terms of algo from here okay i would probably say that we can maybe make it to about this area before we consolidated and then we drop down, right? So that's from here on the way up. Let's just say you bought in right now. From here on the way up, that's 26% just at the bottom of this range. The middle of this range, about 47%, 45%. The top of the range, about 69%. And your stop could be, you know, maybe below these three wicks right here. They're 
where we consolidated for the last two or three days, which is around uh, 0.2232. Okay, so that's a pretty good risk to reward trade. You're risking about three or four percent downside to about you know 25 to 40 percent upside. Uh, June ID asks, how many indicators do you use? Um, I don't really use that many indicators, to be honest. You guys know me. You know, I use RSI, I use OBV, um, I use this thing right here, which is the Bitcoin production cost. You can look this up yourself. I use pivots, which is a simple way of looking at horizontal support and resistance levels. Okay, so if you're not familiar with drawing SR levels the way I do, just look up this thing right here, pivots traditional. So all you got to type in in the indicators area. Okay. And then over here, I mean, you know, there's different indicators that I look at. This is called the uh, COT data, which is commitment of traders report. This is a gathering of information from the CME exchange, which is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which trade, they trade the Bitcoin futures markets. And so they gather information about how professionals are doing, which are the non-reportables, non-commercials are your hedge funds, and open interest is again, you know, uh, contracts on futures. This is the hash ribbons right here. Okay, again, hash ribbons has also stated that we're in the capitulation phase of Bitcoin. So there's numerous indicators that can show you that, all right, well, you know, there's many reasons to be bearish. Yes, you could make the argument that there's also other indicators that are showing you that we could be bullish, right? So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. If you're bullish, then wait at least for that breakout, like I said, out of this pennant. If you're bearish, look out for my descending triangle that I've showed you guys over and over again. Okay. All right. That's pretty much it, folks. If you guys have any more questions, you could join the free Discord community uh, below. There's a link below in the YouTube description. Come join it. Uh, and then you'll get access to just, you know, this community discussion channel. Um, this is kind of where, you know, I put out some information here and there. But if you really want to join all these locked channels right here, join the discount. It's a 50% discount. You get to try out our community for 50%. And I, I get to show you guys exactly how we trade on a day-to-day -day basis. The videos that you're seeing right now, I do twice a day for our Advantage members. I put up daily analysis for our Advantage members, updates for the Advantage members, and then Fassel writes equities updates, right? And even just paying $50 alone to have this right here, where you get to talk to a former portfolio manager every single Sunday and ask them how the economy is doing and the stock market is doing, I think $50 just for that is enough. You get to have a private conversation in a Zoom session, a private Zoom session with a former portfolio manager and currently runs a hedge fund and tells you how he's trading in the market. I mean, think about the, the advantages of learning from someone who has about 35 to 40 years of experience. Okay, so I hope you guys come join. Um, you know, shoot me a message if you do come join and you want to take advantage of that 50% off. Until then, I will catch y'all tomorrow or the day after when I do another live session. Join the free Discord community below. All right, take care, cheers, and hit the thumbs up.